In my previous video, Sandata Keita was credited for uniting the Malinke people in Kandamba and merging the kingdom with the remains of the old Ghana Empire to carve out the mighty Man Empire. Now let's trace together the involvement of this once mighty West African Empire. After Sunday Akita consolidated his empire, he devoted himself solely to the effective government and improvement of the trade and wealth of the people. He never went to war in person, but he had the task of the expansion of empires to his generals. He established an efficient administration which guarantees peace and prosperity. He transferred the capital of the empire from Jeriba to Nyane. This gave Mali a new and more convenient administrative center. The rest of the empire was divided into provinces, ruled under the authority of trusted relatives and generals, while others were ruled by the local chiefs, or to whom are attached supervisory officials called Faldas. Through Sandayata's general military conquest, he gained control of the good producing areas of Wangara. Bamboo and Bondi. This set Mali to become the main suppliers of food for the trans saharan trade. Similarly, this conquest brought into the empire the copper producing area of Takeda and the salt mines of Tangaza. Sundayata's success and the resultant rise of Mali Empire has been attributed to many causes. One such advantage was the geographical position of Kangawa. It was favorable to practice agriculture and produce enough food to feed its large population, including its large fighting force. Its geographical position also gave it control of trans-Saharan commerce and monopoly of the trade, especially as the growth producing region of Wangara, Bamboo and Buru had been brought within the empire. After the oppression of Sumangu, a liberator was needed and some data was therefore welcomed and given support. Some kings of the Fasa states even sent archers to both Sandata's eye. The Islamic religion was another factor which contributed to the rise of man. Unlike Ghana, Kangaba had for a long time been a Muslim state, even before Sandata's ascension to the throne. As a result, it was not the target of the only wars of the desert Muslims, and therefore its rise to empire was undisturbed. The Islamic religion also brought to Mali the benefit of external trade and the advantages of Muslim statecraft and unity. Indeed, Sandatas was one of the most outstanding personalities in Sudanese history. By the time he died in 1225 AD, he had successfully laid foundations of the empire of Mali. Under him, the fame, greatness and weight of Mali superseded that of the ancient Ghana in the contemporary civilized world. Sandata not only laid strong foundation for the empire of Mali, but also bequeathed to the Keita dynasty a legacy of Ebu rulers, the greatest of whom was Mansa Khan Kamusa. We have a great lesson to learn from Sandarata's life that he was able to overcome the difficulties of his early lives both physically and psychologically to become great kings and leader, a liberator of his people and the founder of Mali Empire, makes him an interesting character for studies and emulation. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And let me know what you think down in the comment section. Thanks for watching.